Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today, day, today we're doing a pick up aisle, intuition training, um, healing messages from the shadows. I will timestamp down below. Go ahead and focus on the three piles ahead of you and intuitively make your selections. All right. If you have picked pile A, we have ancestors, the love and legacy of our DNA. Number six, High Peak Priestess of Ea. Ancestors, the love and legacy of DNA. I walk in their footsteps, their wisdom inside me remains. I am unique, yet carry a legacy. Their blood runs in my veins. Whether or not we know our ancestors, we are the product of those who have lived before us, DNA-wise. Externally, we may have the body type of our father, our mother's eyes, our grandmother's nose, our great-grandfather's skin tone. On the inside, it gets more, even more interesting. We know now that we can inherit the way our body works blood types, genetic disorders, even propensities for aspects of brain function like introversion, musicality, and mathematics. Many pagan paths associated with Halloween believe that we are born perfectly imperfect to be exactly what we are meant to be. What does this mean? It means that the gifts our ancestors have left us and the unique synergy of the combination of the physical, mental, and emotional that is created within us sets us up perfectly to achieve our ultimate purpose. Should the ancestor card bring itself to your attention, know that you are ready and able to action your birthright of power. You have the support of those who came before you. There may be challenges or struggles, but you have everything you need to overcome them. You will prevail. Number six, High Priestess of Air. You have drawn the symbol of the vampire high priestess of air, the goddess of rational thought. Logical thinking, reason, and using your mind to consider the next right action are the qualities encouraged by my vampire high priestess of air. Now is the time to think before you act. You are blessed with a wondrous mind and imagination. Your ability to communicate is enhanced when you meet the high priestess of air. This is the moment to have reasonable conversations and make calculated decisions. All right, at 310, you have chosen pile B. You have graveyard, unnecessary fear, 14, denial. Graveyard, unnecessary fear. The stones they mark, the eternal resting place. Yet the spirits they are walking, and they are ready for the chase. Today's modern graveyards are restful places, normally highly manicured and very well set out. While they can be places of profound sadness, few are the creepy gothic places of old, yet they still hold an undercurrent of fear and seem frightening places. Due to the countless stories of haunted graveyards, the thought of walking through cemeteries invokes fear in many of us. We imagine zombies and ghosts rising from the graves and bad spirits hiding out, waiting to harm an unsuspecting living person who works, walks by. The idea of being at a graveyard after dark or worse at midnight is the stuff of dares and nightmares. But this isn't the way with every culture. On the Mexican Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos, whose whole families picnic on the graves of their loved ones who have passed. Children play upon the graves. People play music, drink wine, and share food, all in the company of the dead. Graveyard dust is used as an ingredient in protective spells, not in curses. Pull this card and know that you fear unnecessarily. Things are not as they seem. 
and you can overcome your obstacles. The anxieties you have, although real, should be put aside before they haunt you long term. Instead, trust that you know the correct next steps and that you will act upon them. 14 breaks down to a 5. Lives are changed. Denial. Not everything is in reach, my child. Sometimes I must create distance between what you want and when or how you are meant to receive it. Consider the wait for your highest good. You are not meant to achieve what you want right now. Keep the faith, for if you wait and show patience, I will reveal some wondrous things later. This is a gentle warning not to get caught up in your desire to reach your goal too soon. You may choose sour fruit that only looks ripe and juicy. In this case, I alone know when the time is ripe. Patience, my child. At 612, if you have chosen pile C, I'll just quickly write the timestamp down for you guys. We have trick or treat, mischief and play. And number 29, movement. Trick or treat, mischief and play. Stalking and stomping, eyes shining and begging baskets, faces and bodies that are no longer ours, laughing, skeletons, and candy caskets. Trick-or-treating is such a fun thing to do, is it not? Yet why do we trick-or-treat? Ancient peoples understood that there were both mischievous and perhaps nasty spirits wandering around at nightfall at Halloween, as well as happier, more benevolent spirits. They thought that if they dressed up as spirits themselves or other frightening creatures, then they would not be recognized as human and attacked. The idea of causing a little chaos as one of these spirits was part of the imitation and the enjoyment of the night. The practice in medieval Britain was aptly called souling. Today, trick-or-treating is a huge event. We spend much time, money, and effort dressing up as our scariest creatures and this has even extended to dressing up as our favorite celebrities and other pop culture idols. Instead of traditional candy apples and barn breck, we give out a mind-boggling variety of candy. It matters not. The idea of frightening away death and darkness still stands. I believe that the modern trick-or-treating also unites communities by introducing our families and friends to those around us in a non-threatening and joyful way. Many of us do not know our neighbors even those who live next door. And Halloween gives us an excuse not to not be so reserved and extend our boundaries. Should you receive the trick-or-treat card in your divination, it may well be time to examine the role of play and mischief in your own life. You don't have to be a child to let go and have some playtime, and you can extend the fun to others. Sometimes we are afraid to make mistakes and Play is one way to alleviate the pressure that we sometimes place on ourselves to get everything perfect every time. Alternately, it is worth knowing that there is a balance between manipulation and mischief. The former is not pleasant, and the other has at its core a sense of irreverent fun. 29 breaks down to an 11, which breaks down to a 2. Movement. This is a time of change in movement and a symbol for wonderful surprises. If you have been waiting for something, you will soon have clarity. You will get answers you thought would never come and you will move closer to things that were out of reach before. Perhaps this card predicts a trip that you've always wanted to take. The symbol for movement can indicate both a change of scene and a real shift in the direction of your life. No matter what this symbol holds for your question, know that this wonderful change is now possible. This is the time to make your move. There you go, guys. Have a wonderful day.